Hey, the weather's nice. Amazing. The weather's weather nice. terrible, actually, over here. I had, I had this great sleep tonight, bro. Great back-to-back nights with some great sleep. Lakers win, bro. I'm out cold, bro. I'm bro, dreaming. everyone's like on my TikTok is on my deck because I picked the Warriors to beat the Lakers. Yeah. But Didn't you also said Warriors, the Warriors? Are gonna the sweep Warriors the at six. I was like, you said Warriors would sweep the Kings. By the way, top five ticks. Oh, you did. I did. I, I don't know what you're talking about, but anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, welcome I, uh, everyone to the 35th episode of Some Casual Takes, a podcast hosted by me, Stephen Pepper, featuring other sports fans debating interesting topics with the most casual takes. This episode is brought to you by no one. We have Kieran on the panel again. And with Capo, how are we doing, bro? Capo, I know you got some nice yeah. sleep yet again, bro. Amazing, man. Amazing. Sleep. I was not feels built. good with the dub, bro. Shout out to Bad Baz joining me. Bad mm-hmm. is joining me today. Um, just exposing those frauds yet again. You know Steph Curry, bro. I think he's in his last 10, 2 and 8 against LeBron without Steph Cur- without Kevin Durant in a playoff game, bro. Mm-hmm. What does that say about Steph Curry? Nope. You know, it's just interesting because it's just like, what would Kev, what would Steph Curry's legacy look like without Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant really just like destroyed or added to like a billion legacies. Because really, Steph Curry is two for eight against LeBron in his last 10 playoffs. So like if Kevin Durant doesn't join the Warriors and the Cavs did get better in 2017, what are we saying about Steph Curry, bro? What are we saying about Steph Curry today? But it's interesting, bro. It's interesting. Um, before we get into we have two games we're going to talk about. But before we get into that, we have two games um, that p- go on tonight. Uh, Sixers, Celtics. T- we have two series tied 2-2. This is going to be a fun night as well, just like last night. I want to get you guys' quick opinions on your predictions for tonight's game. We got 76ers, Celtics in Boston, 2-2. Who do you guys got? Um, I think I got, I got the Celtics um, going in and – Winning the night. I don't think Tatum has a, a terrible performance back to back. I don't really see it happening. Um, yes. I think he's going to pick up a little bit of slack. He he actually finished off decent um, last game after having a terrible first half. So I, I can kind of expect him to just carry on with that performance. If he if definitely if he has a back to back, just back to back trash performances. We definitely have to have a question about playoff Jason Tatum, you know. So, but I, I definitely don't expect him to lose tonight. Um, yeah, I, I definitely see him winning. Kieran, who you got, bro? Um, I got the Celtics because I think out of, like, all the teams that are left, I think they're the best team. Uh, I have them winning the finals. So, what did I? I got the Celtics. I the Celtics win the finals too, but bro, it's looking a little shaky. But I will say, I do got them beating Philly. I don't like how Philly needs like virtuosos from Harden and Embiid to mm-hmm. barely win in overtime with Jason Tatum playing mid. I don't like that. Um, so if Philly does have a chance. You need Harden and Embiid to both combine for like what 70, 75. Because you can't rely on Tobias Harris and Maxi. It's not the most reliable player in the world. So you're going to have to bank on Harden and Embiid to both go for 75. The line is Boston minus seven. That's not a good sign if you're Philly. Tied 2 2 off a win and you're a seven and a half point underdog is not a good sign. I'm going to go with Vegas here. I don't think it's going to be seven and a half, but I, that's just too big to say Philly's going to win. So I'm going to take Boston, the team I picked to win the title. I just think James Harden is going to come out. He just had a good game. You know, Harden's a little inconsistent, so now he's going to have a bad game. So I'm going to take Boston uh, tonight. Um, I just don't think Harden and Embiid are going to have those two great performances again. I don't think hard – for Harden and Embiid to both combine for what was it, like pretty much 80, and Tatum was mid and it still went to overtime. Like they were like a half a second away from Smart hitting a game winner. After all that, at home, I can't trust Philly in this series. I had Boston winning the series in six games, and I'm still going to pick Boston tonight. I think they bought Boston wins the next two. But I'm excited for this game. I like parity either way. Um, yeah. And then the Suns Nuggets at 10. Suns just won two in a row. 
Loki thought the series was over. But the Nuggets bench has completely disappeared, and the Suns bench has come alive. And Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, I did say they were going to win game three on the last pod because I said Durant and Booker are going to have two great games, and they're going to win game three. I didn't think they were going to win game four, but they did. And <coughs> you guys got winning this. Uh, you guys got winning this game. This one's tough, but um, I have the Nuggets winning this game. Um, Jokic just pulled up and went for fifty-one last night, and and I just remember seeing him on the bench just yelling, and and I, I kept hearing just the memes about there's only two of them. And it's right, bro. This, I think this you can't. It was, through, bro, for real. Yeah, you can't get through a whole series. I don't think without some sort of um, uh, help. And I don't think Shamit is gonna pull off for what another twenty point performance again or eighteen points again. So um, I definitely think the Nuggets just with how, with their depth, they're just not gonna let another um, win slip away, and they're gonna go ahead and secure it tonight for sure. Um, I, think feeling, biggest, I think I think the biggest edge factor for the Suns is when Chris Paul is out. Um, Chris Paul is in. Um, they like to like slow her down the pace. Um, I think it was a good way, like how they started. Like, um, they started more fast pace. Like Devin Booker got going early. So did Kevin Durant. So I think the Suns are a good spot, but. I think the Nuggets are the best team in the West. So um, I got the Nuggets winning this game. Uh, I don't see a scenario if Jokic goes for 50 and 11 that they lose again. Yeah. I will say I got the Nuggets. I think the line moved up to Nuggets five and a half. Vegas has usually been right throughout the entire playoffs. Whenever the line moves in one direction, they usually been right. I will say I'm going to take the Nuggets. It's going to be close, but role players play better at home. I expect Porter Jr. to hit some threes. He was really selling in game four. He wasn't yeah. knocking down his shots that he was supposed to in game four. I think he's going to knock down those shots. Oh ACP is another guy who was knocking down oh. key shots in game two. I expect him to knock down more shots because role players play better at home. I expect the Bruce Brown of the world to start coming more alive like they did in game one or game two. The problem for the Nuggets is the reason why they lost three and four it's not only just because Booker and Durant went off. It's because the Suns bench, their role players outplayed the Nuggets role players. And I think now that it's in Denver, the role players of the Nuggets are going to get that edge they did in game one and game two and win that game. Like you said, I don't expect Shannon to go off and hit all these timely threes and push 20 points. I, I don't see that. But I also think Kieran's right, too. I like the point when he said about Chris Paul being out kind of helps like you you didn't you don't really expect that like oh it's chris paul he's getting hurt it helps it actually does kind of help the team because like you said chris paul comes in he brings the ball up the court he's like what 36 37 he's dribbling up really slow taking his time up the court and it takes a lot longer for kevin Durant and devin booker to get the ball and, and get to their spot chris paul likes to run down that shot clock but without chris paul you got like a campaign, a sham, or more Devin Booker, Kevin Durant bringing the ball up the court. It's a lot faster. Now Kevin Durant and Devin Booker have the ball in their hands quicker, and they can push the pace faster and get to their spot, get to that nice elbow, get to that baseline jumper. Chris Paul would dribble down the shot clock before giving it to Booker and Kevin Durant. So I, I, it does help, but I'm going to take the Nuggets. I think this is um, – I would really love this to go seven, but if I had to make an early prediction, I think the Nuggets close out the next two. This is a very interesting series, though. I think both Jokic and Booker are averaging about 35 in this series. Like, we're, I think we should not take this series for granted. This is a no, crazy is series that we're seeing right here. Yeah. Like, people have to realize, like, with Devin Booker, we're seeing, like, the greatest scoring stretch we've ever seen in a playoff postseason run like ever. And that's why. The man is averaging, like, 37 the entire playoffs on 70 true shooting. Like, what are the – other player is doing that ever. That's why it's top 10. Bro. I'm pushing the what? agenda. That's mm -hmm. why it's top 10. I was ahead of the curve. I said after like game one, he was top 10. I'm ahead of the curve before everyone's everyone's catching up now. This is a guy who was the best player on the team that went to the finals. 
This is a guy who was all league first team on a 60 win team last year. Now this is a guy who's averaging 36 points per game in a playoff on insane splits. Like, come on, bro. This this is a guy who's making Kevin Durant a second option. He's top 10. I'm not saying he's better, he's not better than Kevin Durant, but I'm just saying, bro. And again, like it kind of seems like I value like just high scoring and nothing really else. But without Chris Paul, Booker's playmaking has been better. It has been better. Yeah, bro had 12 assists last game. It isn't crazy, but he's been better. He's shown some nice playmaking abilities. His defense isn't that great, but like how many other players are playing elite defense in their top 10? But so that's a top 10 player right there. Devin Booker is going off. This is a crazy series, though. I hope everyone doesn't take this for granted. When you have two guys on the opposing ends of the court going for 35, kind of reminds me of the Warriors Cavs when LeBron and Kevin Durant were both going for 35. If you have a series like that, bro, don't take it for granted because we're going to be pulling up this series in like five years as like a classic. But honestly, though, like the overall that. playoffs, before we get into like tonight, last night's games, the overall playoffs have been insane because we're going into like every series not knowing who's going to win. Like, yeah. seriously, even though everyone still has Boston being Philly, the series is tied 2 2. Like, even yeah. on the series that we expect a team to win, it's getting close. Like, I really love these playoffs. And, I, and like I said about the Phoenix and Nuggets series, again, in about five years, we're going to look back in this playoffs and we're going to be like, whoa. This was a classic playoffs, like for real. 100%. I think I've just seen performance, like people like Devin Booker stepping up. Um, you're seeing like special performances like Lonnie Walker in the fourth quarter. Like we, we just have a whole bunch of like moments that we're going to be able to remember for, for a while. Just I haven't seen a playoff like this at all. And now we talk Lakers. Mm-hmm. So the Los Angeles Lakers, LeBron, it's up three to one against the Warriors. Now, no one thought this was going to happen. The Warriors were the favorite to win the series. The Los Angeles Lakers had what, like a 0.3% chance to even make the playoffs. And now they're here, a game away from the Western Conference Finals. The Lakers won last night 104 101 in dramatic fashion. I think we can call this the Lonnie Walker game. I'm sitting here watching this game. The Lakers go down, what was it, seven entering the fourth quarter. I'm panicking, bro. I can't lie, I'm scared. I'm scared. LeBron James is bricking threes. <laughs> Anthony Davis is no showing in the second half. Schroeder's throwing the ball out of bounds. I'm panicking, bro. I'm literally panicking. I'm like, okay, we're going to go 2-2, 2-2, two, 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 tied 2-2, two, two, going into Golden State. We don't want that, bro. Like, we do not want that. And the start of the fourth quarter, here comes this dude I've been praising all last three months, hits a three to cut it a four, and goes on this insane run. Scores 15 in the fourth quarter. Lonnie Walker in the fourth was the MVP last night. Shout out to Lonnie Walker. If you guys have been here for like a couple months, I've been praising every stream that Lonnie should be in the rotation and the dreams come true. We used to pray for times like this, bro. Mm-hmm. Lonnie Walker, 15 points, hit shot after shot. Bro, if Lonnie Walker wasn't on fire, we'll be sitting up here today criticizing LeBron James for bricking shots. We'd be criticizing Anthony Davis for no showing in the fourth quarter. We'd be <laughs> criticizing the Lakers. And Stephen A. Smith, all the media would hit the panic button saying the Golden State Warriors about to win the series going into Golden State. But we're here because of Lonnie Walker. What did you guys like seeing from Lonnie Walker, bro? What did you guys like? Um, this is a crazy I, game. Uh, I, I like how he saved LeBron's legacy. <laughs> ah, here we go. Here comes the Skip Bayless. <laughs> oh, the Skip Bayless coming. I haven't been on Undisputed yet. Um, I got to check Undisputed after the show. Oh, no, no, no. You're actually going to like this one. He was praising LeBron. I'm not joking. Oh, okay. I, I didn't, I didn't watch LeBron at all today. I spent, I spent all day watching film. Uh, I got attached to me undisputed after this, bro, because I was I was worried. I said in our chat, Cap, I was like, pre-skip tomorrow, Lonnie Walker, leave yeah. LeBron or something. Like, yeah, he was actually bashing Steph Curry. So, oh yeah, he he was. I saw on Twitter last night. I mean, that's what I'm gonna do later. Um, so Lonnie Walker, like, I didn't really know much about him. Like going like going into the trade deadline. Um, I always thought like he was just like that three and D guy, and he kind of proved it last night. I don't, I don't think you can like put Lonnie Walker 
in the rotation because I've seen some games where he's absolutely awful. Like, he's just absolutely terrible. Um, I wouldn't rely on him to start, but, like, if if there's, like, one game where, like, LeBron or AD are just, like, not showing in the fourth quarter like last night, like, he could be fine. But I, I personally, like, wouldn't, like, give him heavy minutes after this game. But, I don't think he should start, no. No, I don't think so. But I like I like nice twenty minutes off the bench. Kappa, what do you? Yeah, like fifteen to twenty minutes would be nice. But like yeah. if they start playing them like twenty eight minutes, like they're gonna we be play twenty seven. That's because they play them like that whole fourth quarter. Yeah, they do. Pretty much. I yeah. think um, man, I seen Lonnie and he wasn't afraid of the moment at all. Mm-mm. Our offense, I've seen so many times throughout the fourth where our offense was completely stagnant, like. There was no movement. You, you, I could even see in Braun, like, there's much that he could work with. And I just seen him let go and let Lonnie go to work. I seen Lonnie completely attack. I seen him go up to Curry, do a little tween, tween, just right in his mouth, yeah. just pull up. And I didn't think that that was, like, that was in his bag at all. And it just felt like he couldn't even miss. So um, just coming off the bench, bro, and then still – Coming in and playing like a starter, taking those shots and, and, and like, taking initiative, bro. I didn't expect Lonnie to do it. I've seen a couple games early in the season where he maybe went off for, like, 17, 20, whatever. But um, I always knew it would be he'd be a better play later down the line, but not this is not like this, bro, not 15 in the fourth quarter. So he did not I'm just happy at Troy Brown Jr., Malik Beasley, are in street clothes on the end of the mm-hmm. bench. That's all I wanted to see. Because Lonnie Walker's better than those two guys, and it's paying off. Lonnie Walker really is a nice shot, too. He hit, he hit a three. Um, he rimmed out another one. Lonnie Walker is a really nice shot, a guy who can come in and guarantee buckets. I've said on the show multiple times, just give him 15 minutes because he's guaranteed buckets. He's guaranteed to give you at least three baskets a game, and he absolutely did that. I don't think – I think he made his first four shots. And you see LeBron James and all of them after the game just embracing him. What do you think LeBron said, bro? Like, thanks for saving my legacy? Like, to Lonnie Walker after the game. Yeah, something along those lines. He was hugging each other, bro. He was probably like, yo, I appreciate it, bro. Like, I don't want to hear Skip Bayless tomorrow if it wasn't for you. Something like that. I don't even know. But so for the Golden State Warriors to start the game, they kind of got out of this action, which was weird at the end of the game. Um, But to start the game, why I was kind of scared is because Steve Kerr found something in our defense that I was like, okay, this is why Steve Kerr is one of the smartest coaches ever. Because he makes just these insane playoff adjustments time after time. We think about the Jermichael Green game two adjustment. It really worked. And we think about this adjustment here. So what Steve Kerr did and what burned the Lakers early um, was the Gary Payton adjustment. And Gary Payton actually played pretty fine in this game, 15 points, only missed two shots. So what Gary Payton did, if you watch the game, what Gary Payton did was they would just screen Gary Payton. I think they would have like Anthony Davis or someone on Gary Payton. Basically, Gary Payton allowed them to go smaller and have a better roll guy to the paint. And it would just confuse the Lakers in a bunch of pick and roll actions. So the Lakers would have... The Warriors would have Steph Curry as the primary ball handler. That's why his assists were so high. They would have Curry as the primary ball handler. And they would just – whoever was Anthony Davis was guarding, they would send him to screen, and Anthony Davis would be sucked onto the perimeter. And the paint would be wide open for a guy like a Gary Payton who can finish inside in the paint. And it destroyed the Lakers for about all up until the fourth quarter when I think the Lakers got out of that action. And it, it was concerning. I really thought they were going to lose there. What did you guys see out of that pick and roll action? Do you think Golden State's going to keep going to that, or are they going to ditch it? Because it seems like they ditched it in that fourth quarter. I don't know. So I couldn't tell what 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 exactly uh, made them switch it. It was working throughout the whole um, game. Was there an adjustment Darwin Ham made, um, or what? What exactly was it? Because I don't know. They just kind of stopped running it in the final couple of minutes. I don't know why. That I mean that that should have been able to like that should have been enough for you to um secure the win. I think that pick and roll was literally killing us like time and time again. I 
they were gonna. I just seen them abuse it the whole game. It didn't. So I don't understand why you move away from what works. You might as well just keep doing it. But um, now that pick and roll was deadly. I think that they're gonna just continue using that during the um, uh, next game. Um, Curry on ball. Uh, when you see that type of offense with, with him, like especially in the high pick and roll um, with AD. Curry just knows how to maneuver. You just seen it. You've seen him just pick the offense apart with 14 assists. So it's deadly, bro. It works. We've seen it. We've seen it like a hundred times last game. So I just I just expect them to do it again. I expect another 30 point. I mean, a 30 shot game from Curry. I don't think he goes three for 13 like he did last game at all. Um, but. You're gonna see the offense just use a, a bunch of pick rolls, just like pre- previously. It's what works. So, so the Lakers outside of LeBron, Anthony Davis, you have Danzel Russell. I mean, Danzel Russell was not great, but you think about it, he was good in Game Three. Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, mm-hmm. Dennis Schroeder, now Lonnie Walker. That's about five guys who can kind of get their own shot. This is a very deep team. And Kieran, you said earlier in the show that the Nuggets are the best team in the West. How exactly are they better than the Lakers, bro? Um, I think the duo between Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray is very lethal. I understand LeBron James and Anthony Davis um, are amazing, but if Nikola, I'm just saying, if Nikola Jokic is playing like this, like rising his game even more in the, in the regular season to the postseason, the Nuggets are going to the finals. And I truly believe the Nuggets. Like, get by the Suns, I think they're going to beat the Lakers. And I know that Lakers have a better defense. But I think I think the gap in offense they have is just so substantial that what the Lakers have on offense um, just because they have Nikola Jokic. And I also, think, I also think the defense for the Nuggets isn't as bad as people say. <coughs> Sorry. Um, um, yes, they don't have, like, the best rim protection. But they have like pretty solid defenders on that team. They have KCP, they have Aaron Gordon, they have Jamal Murray. They're not bad defenders at all. Um, uh, the only issue I have if the Lakers played the Nuggets is that I don't know who's going to guard AD because that's going to be the biggest issue, obviously. But uh, I think the Nuggets are going out of the West. So I think. Honestly, what's the difference in this Warriors Lakers series? Like I just said, outside of LeBron and Davis, Russell, Reeves, Hachimura, Schroeder, now Lonnie Walker, even 15. If we look back at this series, let's say the Lakers win this series. I mean, I hope they do. They simply have more shot creators than the Warriors. And I don't think going into this series, a lot of people saw that. I don't think a lot of people saw that. I mean, the Warriors have Curry. But Thompson isn't much of a shot creator. Yeah. He relies a lot on screen. And we saw it on the end of the game. We saw it on the end of the game. This man was taking the most contested shots ever because he's not a really good shot creator. Yeah. Um, if Thompson isn't dropping 20, then who's up next for a shot creator? Uh, Poole? Poole's getting 10 minutes a game. No one else really on goal. I mean, Wiggins is always going to give you a nice little 17 or 20 points a game. You can rely on Wiggins. But outside of Wiggins, there really isn't that many shot craters on Golden State. And what I'm seeing in this series is that the Lakers are going to next shot crater, next shot crater, next shot crater. Whereas Golden State has to rely on just Curry, Wiggins, Prey Clay's hitting his threes, and Prey Wiggins is actually on play. Pool is actually playable. So when I'm looking at this Lakers team, I think this is the deepest team in basketball. I don't think this many teams could go this deep with shot craters. Like, maybe other than Boston, mm-hmm. but I don't think many teams can compete on a depth level like the Lakers. And when we talk about the Nuggets, I don't think the Nuggets can go this deep with shot creators. But I'm not going to get too ahead of myself on Lakers versus Nuggets because the War- Lakers had to beat the Warriors first and the Nuggets had to beat the Suns first. But I think a key part of the series <clears throat> is that the Lakers just have more shot creators than the Warriors. And pull, bro. Can someone explain to me what's going on with Jordan Poole? Like, dude, this dude is getting unplayable. I can't see a $25 million man get unplayable like this. He misses, like, his first four shots, turns the ball over, gets yanked for the rest of the game. 
for Moody and DiVincenzo. I think two guys who are probably like 70 overalls in 2K. You like look like a three. Oh, you're cutting out, bro. I can't hear you. Yeah, you are. Hello? Yeah, what up? Yeah, you're good now. All right, so I think the one problem with Jordan Poole is that Steve Kerr is trying to make him more of an off-ball guy, and that's not really been his game. He's more been, Wait. like, more on the ball. Uh, he can create his own shot, even though it's, like, streaky at times. Um, I th- Like, I don't know. Like, I just, like, when you look through the entire regular season, um, it, it's very hard for a player to – get into a role where you're starting for like a lot of games when Steph Curry is out. And then when Steph Curry comes back, your role changes. You're not like the main point of the offense anymore. And we've seen Jordan Poole thrive without Steph Curry. Like he's played like really good basketball. Steph Curry. Um, I just think, I just think, I just think like Jordan Poole has never been an off ball guy. He'll never be an off ball guy. He needs he needs the ball to be effective, and I I just don't think Steve Kerr realizes that. I, think I actually awesome. agree. I didn't I didn't realize that. I didn't Yo, think Capo, that. bro, look who cut his hair. Ooh, go! <laughs> Damn, Damn. Expo- oh, exposed to someone on the stream. <laughs> That's my bro. Yeah, he finally cut his hair today. Damn. Oh, we waited on the day, man. It's been a long time coming. Been a long time coming, but okay. <clears throat> Kieran, I actually think, bro, you're spot on. I wanted to bring that up today. When I'm watching a guy like Jordan Poole, I don't think he's trash. I think he has a very high ceiling. I think this is a guy when Steph Curry was out, this dude was giving you 20 or 30 a game. I don't think Jordan Poole's trash. I just think Jordan Poole can't play winning basketball in that Golden State system. I don't think he can play behind Steph Curry. I don't think Jordan Poole can hide in the corner. I don't think he's that type of player. I think he's a, more of a ball dominant player, a guy who needs the ball to play for play make for himself. I think Jordan Poole would be great on a team that doesn't really have that many expectations, like an Orlando Magic. I think Jordan Poole can go average twenty for like an Orlando Magic right now. But I think if he's on like a Golden State, playing behind Curry, championship expectations. I don't think Poole has championship DNA in him. Was he playing just as much off-ball basketball last year in the fi- um, in that playoff run? Well, I think if you look best at the best stats from the playoffs last year was when he was playing more on the ball when Steph Curry was recovering yeah. from injury. Um, yeah, because if you look at the Nuggets series, like, Jordan Poole, like, was awesome. Like, yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah, Jordan Poole, like, yes, exactly. Jordan Poole was awesome against the Nuggets last season, the postseason, last year in the playoffs. But that was because Steph Curry was coming off the bench. And when, when Steph Curry got inserted in that starting lineup, Jordan Poole went back to five points. Like, yeah, uh, I gotta see. Let me pull that up actually. Yeah, because I, mean, I remember like the first couple of games against the Nuggets. Uh, he was having 30 points. He was having 30, but I'm trying to see what he did when Curry got back into the lineup. Because Cur- when Curry finally got back into the lineup, Jordan Poole wasn't as effective. Let me, let me just pull this up. Um, Pool 11 points on 30% shooting in game four. Game five, pool 30% shooting, eight points. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, the end of the season is giving you 29, 30, like 23 points. But then when Curry gets back in the lineup and taking most of the shots, pool's giving you mid. No, that's below mid. He's giving you garbage. Pool's becoming unplayable. I don't think he's an unplayable player. Just not on this team. Just not on this team. Is Poole worth about $20 million? Yeah, but like on Orlando Magic, not Golden State. I don't think he plays championship basketball. And it's really hurting those teams because, like I said, the Lakers are deeper. The Lakers are deeper than um, the Warriors. And they become even more deeper when Jordan Poole isn't being the shot creator that they paid him for. Um. But can we talk about before we move on to the next seat? Can we talk about Curry not being clutch, bro? Can we talk about yeah, how clutch talk. is Steph Curry? Steph Curry, I mean, Steph Curry, if we simplify, he's clutch. He's leading the playoffs in fourth quarter scoring. But man, I'm watching him every year in the playoffs in that final minute. He shrinks. He shrinks. Steph Curry now in the 
in the final 30 seconds on a go-ahead game-tying shot in the playoffs, he's 0 for 10, bro. Damn. I think about that shot in the 2019. Mm. I think about those shots in those 2016 NBA Finals over Kevin Love, that potential shot in the 2019 Game 6 against the Raptors. I think about that shot. Now I'm thinking about him shooting one-legged three-point floaters against Sacramento in Game 1 or a one-legged shot against Anthony Davis over, um, last night, and then he's shooting half-court shots over Anthony Davis for the win. Steph Curry, his shot selection goes – for someone who's the greatest shooter of all time, who hasn't made a single three in crunch time, how clutch is Steph Curry? Yeah. We got a question that, man. I never really thought of him as a fourth quarter man. Trust me. He shows up. You you, you can definitely expect him to um, play his game all the way up until the last two minutes. Exactly. All the way up until last two It's minutes. weird. It's so weird. Yeah. This dude can drop, like, what, 10 points in the fourth quarter? But as soon as that final minute hit, he doesn't know how to make a three. Right. Like, seriously. Kieran, I don't know if you – I know you're a big Steph Curry guy, and you got Curry over Magic. Am I? You got Curry over Kobe Bryant, guys who've, you know, made some big Am time Am I a big shots. Steph Curry guy? Like, I'm not even that big of a Steph fan. But like... You have Curry over Magic and Kobe as we speak, bro. And those are guys who've made some big-time shots. Doesn't mean I'm a Curry fan. <laughs> uh, oh, I just said you're a Curry guy because you have him over. So you have to explain to me. Dude, I, dude, dude last year, if you saw me last year, I was literally calling Curry washed. <laughs> <laughs> How would Curry be washed? No, in the regular season, he was playing like dog shit for like three oh. months. That's why. Um, oh. Wait, so what are we talking about? Sorry. <laughs> Curry being clutch. Um, I think it just comes down to like what type of defense that like players play against him in the final minute. Like you saw the last you, wa- you saw the last possession like last game. It was Anthony Davis on Steph Curry. Like and like Anthony Davis could keep up with like any guard in the NBA. But like I don't know. It's just like some sometimes like I feel like Steph Curry should make those shots because he's Steph Curry and I've seen him make those shots. Uh the Raptors one is was really bad because that like even though they didn't give him like a good cushion, it was a makeable he was shot, open, bro. He was like open. it was a makeable shot. So you the greatest shooter he, ever. Yeah, he's the greatest shooter of ever. He's made that shot multiple times. Um, mm-hmm. I just think it comes down to like confidence. I don't know, but like, like Steph is very confident. So like, I guess it doesn't really make sense. But like, I don't know. It's just like. There's just some players that like just aren't clutch in the final minute. I guess like I don't know. Like Steph, like if Steph, like if Steph is like getting it going in the fourth quarter and they're up, like I'd be more confident. But if they're down, like I don't know. Okay, to me now, since I have you on my stream, explain to me why you think Steph Curry is higher all time right now. This isn't if Steph Curry wins a fifth ring. You think Steph Curry right now is higher than Magic and Kobe? Me? Right? Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Just explain that for the chat. Why do you um, think? I think when it comes Steph- to Steph Curry, um, when it comes to, like, accolades and stuff, I don't really look at that just because I feel like it's more, like, voting base than, like, actually, like, get a depiction of their game. Um I think when it comes to Steph Curry, Magic, and Kobe, they all have their strengths and they all have their weaknesses. Uh, I think when it comes to Steph Curry, I rather take his offense over Kobe's two way ability because I feel like often, like I feel like Kobe's defense is not sustainable to like creating elite defenses on teams. I think he is obviously a positive on defense, but it's not like elevating elite defenses for making them come elite. Whereas Steph Curry, well, yeah, he's not a good defender. He's going to make, like, these offenses, like, historically great. Like, I don't think Kobe's offense is making teams, like, historically great. So, and then when it comes to Magic and Steph, I think it just depends, like, what offense you want for your team. Um, If you want, like, a ball-dominant, like, point guard who can, like, play, make, and pass and score a little bit, you go with Magic. But... With Steph Curry, um, 
you get more off ball gravity. Um, you get you get better scoring, and you get like a top ten playmaker ever as well. So that's why I have Steph over Magic and Kobe. But I don't really mind if you have Magic and Kobe over Steph. But oh right, great. Great. internet symbol is crazy. Okay, um, I actually don't think that's a bad argument. Um, I'm just more of an accolade merchant myself. <laughs> I, bro, I dude, the funny I thing mean, is, I troll Steph because I'm like, uh, every time he has a bad game, I was like, this dude's really better than Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Tra- dude, I saw your chat where they were saying tragic fans, like, bro, okay. But, um, no, yeah, people, Steph, the hate yeah. for Magic is cringe on this app. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I just don't think Steph's higher all time than Magic or Kobe. Um, I'm an accolade merchant, so people can cry about it. Um, Magic Johnson has what one more MVP, two more finals MVPs, um, and one more championship. Ran the Listen, 80s from top to bottom. I don't care. Um, I don't care if you ran use the accolades. Finish. I don't care if you use accolades unless your criteria is consistent, I guess. Yeah, it is consistent. Mm-hmm. I had context to uh, ran, ran the 80s from top to bottom, from start to finish. Um, Greatest one, probably one of the greatest playmakers ever. Um, one of the greatest offensive players ever. Led some of the best offenses ever. And then I go to Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant has um, one more championship, one more Finals MVP. Uh, Kobe Bryant actually has all defensive teams. A pan, one of the most all defensive first teams ever. Actually play on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and both those guys actually have you know more clutch moments than uh, Steph Curry. So the um. Would Damn. a fifth championship for Steph move the needle for you, like putting him up above? Um, yes and no. I would put him above Shaquille O'Neal, but I don't. I wouldn't put him above Magic. I, I don't know if I would still put him above Magic or Kobe. I think the Magic and Kobe argument would be right there. But I think a lot of people who are quick to put Curry like top five or even top three or four have to understand mm-hmm. that, yes, Curry has five rings. Yes, you have two MVPs. But there are a handful of NBA players who also have – four to five rings, and one to two MVPs, mm-hmm. Tim Duncan, LeBron. Well, LeBron only has four rings, but he also has four MVPs. Kareem, um, Jordan, Jordan, Kobe. I mean, Kobe has one MVP, but still has five rings. Magic has three MVPs, five rings. So people, when they rank Curry and see, oh, Curry has a fifth ring, where's he going to be all time? They just assume that Curry has a resume that, like, no one else has other than, like, Jordan. Yeah. But – because all we do is talk about Jordan, LeBron, Jordan, LeBron, Jordan, LeBron, and then Kareem. And they just assume, like, Curry's just going to be in this, like, tier. Now he's got to pass other people. I think it's an argument, though. Honestly, I hope Curry loses because I don't have a Kobe Curry argument. I never thought we would have that argument. Yeah, that's crazy. I, yeah, but five years ago, if you were to tell me Kobe Curry was going to be the argument, I think he would be crazy. Yeah, no, I, I said the same thing. Argument. That's crazy. I said the same thing. Um, like, seriously, like, me in middle school, seeing LeBron and Curry go up against the NBA Finals, if you were to tell me when Steph Curry won that first championship in 2015, if you were to tell me that him and Magic, him and Kobe would be an argument, I would think, no, you're crazy, bro. You're absolutely insane. It also goes back to Kevin Durant. I was going to say, Ma- like, dude, I was going to say Magic because back then I was at Athletes Merch and I was like, this man has like nine time first team. Steph has like four. This dude has like three MVPs, three finals MVPs. Like, yeah, but Steph. I will give Steph credit, though. I will put him in top seven because, dude, that gravity yeah. is just insane. I don't want to gawk gawk because I criticize Van Gundy. James Harden has more first team all NBAs than Steph Curry, but anyway, I just wanted to say that. What is it, about like one? He's two more. I think also playing with Kevin Durant probably hurt Steph Curry. His first team all NBAs. Uh, Steph only has four, bro, which is kind of surprising. Well, I don't think I don't think Steph won a first team all NBA. With Kevin Durant, I don't think he did. Maybe he won it one time, but all right, we were on Steph and Lakers for too long. Let's close out with the Knicks here. Um, Aaron, series is over, bro. Series is over. You guys, you guys beat my Cavs. You guys beat my Cavs. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you, guys enjoyed it. you beat the Cavs. Are the, heat just like tro- are the Heat like trolling us? Are they, they, they troll. are they actually this good? 
Like, first of all, there's no reason that you're going into the playoff series with Gabe Vincent, Struess, and Martin in a win game. <laughs> bro. There's no way this is happening. Bro, no, the thing that frustrates me about the Heat is that they were a bottom three scoring team in the NBA this year. We're shooting team in the NBA, too. We're, we're shooting, shooting team, team in the NBA, and they're one game away from the conference final and – if they go to the NBA Finals, I don't know what to say. But Cody like, Zeller's getting eight minutes. Hyde Smith is getting six minutes. These are scrubs, bro. There's no Cody way this team should be, There's no way this team should be one win away from the end. There's <laughs> five. There's like five. Yeah, there's times. like five undrafted players on this team. Exactly. Five. Honestly, I don't understand. I'm looking at this team. I I said it in your TikTok. Uh, you on your TikTok uh, last night uh, you, that you posted about the Knicks, bro. I'm seeing first of all Jalen Brunson. Insane playoff performer again. So when I look at the big threes of those teams, Butler, Adebayo, Struess, versus the big three of Randall, Brunson, Barrett, the big three of the Knicks was actually better throughout the game. Seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just think the difference of this game, I think the difference of this game was the bench. I think the bench of the Knicks, if it would have played better, the Knicks would have won this game. And I think if the bench of the Knicks was better throughout the season series, we could have a completely different series because these games have been relatively close if the bench would get their act together. Because Randall, although Randall, although Randall's lack of aggression really made me mad, he still gave you 20 points. Brunson was clicking on 32. Barrett's been a surprising great player. All you needed was the bench, bro. Mm-hmm. But your bench got completely outscored by Martin and Lowry. <laughs> Caleb Martin and old Kyle Lowry outscored you 32 to 10. The bench point. So you lost by eight points. And you also you lost the total score by eight points. And your bench got outscored by 22 points. If your bench was just remote, just a little bit better, you would have won the game. Your bench hit no threes compared to, I think, Miami hit um, five threes off the bench. Compared to bet, you're I always saw that the Knicks as a uh, like one of the deeper teams in the league. Uh, as they look as deeper as than Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah, they're def- they're quickly wants to play great against, great against Cleveland. Josh Hart wants to play amazing yeah. against Cleveland, but now Josh Hart isn't that good. Like literally, if Josh Hart has like that fifteen to twenty point game he does against Cleveland, they win this game, and we're having a completely different conversation going into yeah. New York. Five. Randall, Randall, and Brunson are both battling some injuries, aren't they? Randall's just battling a mental state that's just also, like really. It bad. also pisses me off. Who Max Struess, who's inconsistent as hell the entire season, is shooting forty yeah. percent from three this entire play. I was like, where the hell was this all year? Like, and now I'm just like, bro, I am so freaking mad because like I know we can beat Miami. I just know it. It's just like our bench sucks. Like Literally now. could beat Miami. You're, the reason why you beat Cleveland was because of that bench unit completely wiped Cleveland off the floor. Mm-hmm. Josh Hart was amazing against Cleveland. I think he opened up game one with like 17 points or something like that yep. against Cleveland. And then here your bench is absolutely non-existent. You need Obi Top and hit some threes. You need Josh Hart to hit a corner three, a timely three. Maybe you put in Derrick Rose. Yep. Do you make the adjustment for no. Derrick Rose, bro? No. No, 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 no. Derek I Rose. Say, Tibbs on I love Derrick Rose, resort, but he's you like make lost. the adjustment for Derrick Rose. Don't play the Heat, Rose. the Heat. I love Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler didn't have a crazy game. Out of bio is pretty good. I think out of bio just out aggressive. Out aggressive is that a word? I don't even know. Was more aggressive than Julius oh. Randle, but like no one I mean, in the Heat was I like. Mean, Bam, I mean, Bam is like. I don't know. His offensive game is taking some strides. I will say that. That's yeah, good for the Heat. Yeah, 23, 12 or 13. Because um, against, against Milwaukee, he was absolutely atrocious on the offensive side mm-hmm. for a couple games. Except yep. like game, ready to say something about his game. Except, yeah. except the closeout game, which I think was his best offensive game. He had like a triple double. So, um, Dude, am I yeah. slow? Where's quickly, bro? Did he get uh, oh, he got hurt last game. I forgot. He got hurt last game. Uh, mm, he ran yeah. off the court. My bad. That's what's going to hurt you, too. Now your six-man-of-the-year candidate is not playing. I'm just, I'm just grateful to be here. I, you want a playoff series, bro. But like I said, 
I just think it came down to whose bench wanted it more. The bench of Miami out rebounded you, out assisted you, out defensed you, out shot you. <clears throat> That's what it came down to. Knicks and seven. Hey, Knicks and seven. I want to. That, that was that was my prediction before the series. I want a Madison Square. Part of me wants Miami to win because I want to push my Jimmy Butler's uh, Hall of Fame lock, top 75 lock narrative. But also, I want Madison Square Garden NBA Finals games. I do. LA versus yeah, Madison Christian. Square Garden. Knicks Ooh. versus Lakers Finals, a little 19, what, 71? Yeah, rematch? something like that. That was the Willis Reed game, Willis Reed series. That's yeah. insane. Yo, before before we go, let's let's knock this out. I want to do like who are the top five best players in the postseason right now? Right now. Not like you could say like, oh, Giannis. Like, no, who you think is playing the best out of all the players in the second round? Who's had the best overall playoffs out of the players that left in the second round? Are we talking about overall playoffs or just the second round? Not players who are left. Who's who's played the best in the entire playoffs in the group who's left in the second round? Okay, okay. I can definitely go Devin Booker, number one. Jimmy Butler, number two. You got Booker. I think it's, so you got Booker over Butler. Yeah. I think this is where people are going to be like, maybe lean Booker, but I – or Butler. You got Booker, number one. Yeah, I got. I definitely got Burke, Booker, number one. Um, yeah, Butler, number two. I'm going to give three to Jokic. Four. Ooh. I might swing Curry there. Oh. I'll swing yeah, Curry. I, okay, yeah, I was going to swing Curry. I seen then, AD have a couple stinkers, so like. What about KD5? KD, okay. I, actually, I respect that. KD5 is, I'll go with that. A lot of people are. I would go Anthony Davis because there, he's, man. I don't think the Lakers are up 3 1 against Golden State without Anthony Davis. I don't think. I, I, I don't I, know. The five. problem with Anthony Davis is that his defense has been elite. It's always been elite. It's just that, like, his scoring is so inconsistent. inconsistent. Like, people have to realize, like, oh, 80 is inconsistent. No, it's just scoring that's inconsistent. Yeah. It's not his entire game. Yeah, and it's, it's, it goes by, like, every other game as far as, like, seeing, seeing these playoffs. He'll perform next game. He'll well, perform. I think it also it's like how teams play against him. Like, you know? Yeah, definitely. One thousand percent. I think um but as far as when I like watch K D and how they're playing um K D right now, um I, I see a lot of doubles towards K D. And then you just see uh Devin Booker um work um work his way around the um uh mid range and rim. Uh I don't understand the whole criticism as to um, people giving KD a bunch of like bullshit about him being the second option. He's still performing, putting up a 30 point game. So, regardless of how they're guarding KD or um, AD, I just see KD having the more consistent game throughout the whole playoffs. I would personally swing Anthony Davis because I think. Anthony Davis, yes, he has the inconsistency issues, but that's just on the offense because he's still giving you the best defense in the entire postseason. His yeah. defensive ratings, his opponent field goal percentage, he's first in all those categories throughout the postseason. I think his impact when he's on is greater than Kevin Durant's. I think Anthony Davis, when he has those 30, 30 point, 20 rebounds, <laughs> Seven block games. I don't think there's that many players who could have better impact than Anthony Davis. But you can go Kevin Durant there because I would then I would then put Kevin Durant at six. Mm-hmm. So our top, so our five players to run it down is Devin Booker, Jimmy Butler, Nikola Jokic, Steph Curry, Anthony Davis slash Kevin Durant. You can honestly put Devin Booker and Jimmy Butler one A one B. Are we forgetting but, somebody? I don't know. Nah, I mean Jalen Brown's had a better postseason than Tatum, so if we if we would go down the list, I would honestly have Brown over Tatum. What about Jamal Murray? I know he had a stinker in Game Two, but he he'd be up there. I'd 
some players are hard to rank because like Harden, when he's on, probably had some of the best games in the entire postseason. I mean, having two 40 point games and taking two games off the team I picked to win the championship earns you a top 10 spot, but he also had a terrible series against the Nets and two bad games against Boston. Like, really bad. He was like 5 yeah. 28. Yeah. Like, so it, it'd be hard to judge, but Harden, you probably have to sleep on there. I don't know if I would have LeBron top 10. I think I'd have him 11 through 15. He's been fine. Yeah, he, yeah, he's been fine, he's been but like been he hasn't better. been like. I don't think LeBron's risen. Like players oh, like no, the top no. ten guys who like rose have like these great thirty to forty point games, like an AD, Booker, Butler, Jokic, Steph, Durant. Like I don't think LeBron has like, risen that. Like I, yeah, like Jalen Brunson is a guy I would put above LeBron. Like 20, 22, 10, and five. It's like fine, but and the like, efficiency is, uh, and it's a little shit. Yeah, but like I would have Jalen Brunson right now over LeBron James because Jalen Brunson is playing clearly better than LeBron. Yeah, yeah. he's the mayor of New York, obviously. <laughs> Has LeBron had a thirty-point game this postseason? Uh, I don't, no. I don't Let me look. I think the highest he had was twenty. I think it was, I think it was last game. I think it was twenty-seven. No, nah, he had a twenty-eight-point game against Memphis that they lost. I think he had game two against Memphis. He had twenty-eight. Okay, so the most he's had is twenty-eight. Okay. Yeah, in game, yeah, yeah, it's not thirty, which is kind of yeah. weird. We had thirty against Memphis, uh, Minnesota in that play-in, but we haven't seen thirty point LeBron, which means we're due. Are we due soon? No, we are due. Is happening. he saving it? Okay. Someone said on TV that LeBron James is just picking his spots, and he sooner is. or later we're gonna get a. Once we need it, LeBron's gonna have a virtuoso. Yeah. I think he might be, bro. If LeBron James close out game against Steph, I'm manifesting this right now. So hear me out. Manifesting, mm-hmm. if LeBron James has a 35-10-8 closeout game in Golden State, it's raps for Steph Curry. It's raps. Because, bro, what have I been hearing this week? If Steph Curry wins his fifth ring, he'd be on the same tier as LeFraud. Uh, no. No. I want to – I never thought that. Bury him. I want LeBron to – because here's the thing, right? Because it will look good on LeBron's legacy if he beats Steph Curry in a postseason. It will look good. LeBron can flex it. But, like, it won't look as good if Anthony Davis is being the best player, if Lonnie Walker's saving him in the fourth quarter. It will look so good for LeBron James to say, I'm – if he wins game five, he would be two – he would be nine and two in the last ten against a Katie less Steph Curry in the postseason. Like that would be great for his legacy, bro. At thirty eight to stick it to Steph Curry with like a nice little chef's kiss to the career, bro. Thousand percent for him to break up the the little big three they got going on. To oh, it's up. over for the big three because I'm saying yeah, they lose the second round. Draymond Green's gone. Yeah. There might be shopping Jordan Poole. It might. It yeah. goes- might be in the dynasty. Yeah. LeBron James can say he put the end of the bed to a dynasty, bro. He did I think the Boston. Clay's not- he did the Boston, and he can do it right here to Golden State, bro. He can do it right. What did you say about Clay again? I didn't hear anything about Clay. Oh. Did Kieran say that? I thought so. Like before he, oh, he's up, lagging. But- oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So oh, sorry. You're, you're back, bro. Um, What'd you say? Um, I was gonna say I think. I think if Golden State loses this round, we're gonna see the like. I think we're gonna see Clay and leave. Who? You okay. said Clay's leaving too. Oh, he lagged again. Yeah. So, oh, damn. Right, no, I think. Now. I think Clay might leave too. Yeah. Leave as in what? Two. I, I see. It. Is he a penny uh, free agent? Or is he getting traded? Let me say, Clay is a free agent. Oh, my bad. He's a free agent next year. My bad. Or, yeah, next year, like 2024. Yeah. I think he'll leave after that. It'll be interesting, bro. And the only three guys what's that Steph Curry, like 36? Yeah. You, know you know what's bad? Clay's making $40 million. 
43 mil. That contract is horrible, bro. Like, dude, listen, I thought I had a season, but he's not worth $43 million. Hey, he looked worth it in game two, but then he had to make those comments like, oh, I'm in L.A. I've been waiting 13 oh, years dude. to play in L.A. It pisses me off so much. I'm going to play my hardest in L.A. for Kobe and Gigi. And this dude has made, like, what, five threes at, like, 20 attempts? Uh, I'm shooting horrible in L.A. this playoff series. Like, horrible in L.A. Uh, whatever. I expect him to be great at Golden State because he never honestly doubt, never, never doubt the Warriors, man. It's not over until it's over. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I'm going to always say that again. Like, we're up 3-1, bro, but I, I don't care. I need to see the body dead, you know. I need Fact. to see that. Fact, bro. Fact. Yeah, no. Dude, I'm just what? saying, what if, what if Steph Curry comes back from 3-1 down? Oh, my God. Hey, I can't. First of all, a couple things are going to happen. Number one, Twitter, we'll see you later. That app's getting deleted. Yeah. Um, might have to delete this account because I can't go on TikTok talking about LeBron James. I'm never going on TikTok live anymore with an old head because that's all I'm going to hear. No, I'm just, say- I'm just saying, like, I guarantee you a lot of people are going to be like, this guy's better than Michael Jordan. <laughs> oh, yeah. For sure. It's coming. Oh, the Curry fans would be so insufferable. They already are insufferable. You see on, do you see on TikTok um, those Curry fans that are coming out saying, like, this is, like, an equivalent to 2018 LeBron? Like, this is, like, Curry versus the world? Like, Curry fans are making these comments. Like, Steph Curry has no help. Steph Curry has no all-star teammates. Like, something like that. Like, seriously, that's what they're saying. That's crazy. Man. Dude, they're already coming out last, they're already coming out this year saying uh Steph Curry won an NBA championship um with Andrew Wiggins as the second best player. No one in NBA history has done that with the worst second option. Do Curry fans are trying so hard to make it seem like Curry has like had this hard road in his career, like in this Golden State era? Like, ooh. No one in NBA history has had a harder championship. He won a championship with Andrew Wiggins at his side. Wiggins was literally an all-star starter, giving you 18 a game in, the, in an NBA Finals. Draymond was also an all-star. Yeah. Draymond was first league all-defense. Like, Clay Thompson was giving you 17. Poole was giving you 17 in the Finals. Like, I mean, the playoffs. Come on, bro. You had Kevin the Durant. Hardest, the years. hardest thing that Steph Curry had to go overcome was his knee injuries. That's it. Yeah, and the ankles. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Hardest thing Curry had to do was 2021. That was probably the hardest thing he ever had to do in his career. Oh, yeah. No, nah, I forgot about that. He had, to be, he had to be their entire offense. Yeah. Like, I mean, right now he's probably their entire offense. Yeah, he's playmaking for like five guys on that team. Like, DiVincenzo. Oh, he had 15 assists. Like, what the hell? Mo- yeah, because Moody, DiVincenzo, and Gary Payton literally rely on Steph Curry's gravity. Yeah. Because those guys aren't coming off screens like Clay Thompson. Those guys are literally relying on Steph Curry drawing like double teams, and Curry will like kick it out to the paint. Like Gary Payton, I think all of his points I think were assisted last night. I had hey, to, to make sure fair, Gary Payton played kind of well. So yeah, yeah, because he uh, they planned that. I saw him. I saw the pregame video of him practicing shooting under the basket over like taller defenders um, to so he can practice that rolling, but. Yeah. Whatever, man. Like I said, Lakers. Like I, um, I don't know if I'm gonna have a show this weekend, but next time you guys see me, I will post an announcement on TikTok. Thank you guys for coming on the panel today. Great mm-hmm. episode, 35th of some casual takes, brought to you by no one. I gotta go smack Chris's bald head. Um, hey, man, man. give another one for me, nice. bro. Like D'Angelo Russell said, bro, I'm locked in. The weather is nice outside. I'm about to go outside, bro. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. See you uh, when I see you. Peace.